after studying this module you shall be able to know the meaning of financial forecasting understand the need of financial forecasting learn to read the financial statement identify the peculiar transactions which are significant in financial forecasting analyze the pro forma financial statements introduction financial forecasting is a planning process with which the company's management positions the firm's future activities relative to the expected economic technical competitive and social environment business plans normally show strategies and actions for achieving desired short term intermediate and long term results these are quantified in financial terms in the form of projected financial statements and a variety of operational budgets there are three main techniques of financial projections they are pro forma financial statements cash budgets and operation budgets pro forma statements are projected financial statements embodying a set of assumptions about a company's future performance and funding requirements cash budgets are detailed projections of the specific incidence of cash moving in and out of the business operating budgets are detailed projections of departmental revenue and or expense patterns and they are subsidiary to both the pro forma statements and cash flow statements by developing the pro forma statements a comprehensive look at the likely future financial performance of a company methods of forecasting there are broadly two methods of forecasting the first is the subjective method the skill of the person making the forecast his knowledge about the industry business and firm as well as his analytical power is required in making the forecast subjective method include jury of executive opinion under this method a jury is formed comprising of experienced executives who make independent judgment about the sales of the next period based on the factual information of the past and their mature judgmental abilities the chief executive then reconciles all the forecast made the method is simple but the major disadvantage is that it is based on opinions only sales force estimates it is believed that a sales team which has rich exposure of the market and have real and practical hands on knowledge about the firm's various products and maybe direct interaction with the customer can make better forecast than the sophisticated statistical tools the second method is objective and this method uses the statistical tools in making the forecast these methods are trend analysis via extrapolation a simple method of making a forecast of the future is to extrapolate the past sales trend this method is based on the assumption that the sales will change to the same degree as sales changed from prior period to the current period the trend can be regular seasonal and cyclical sometimes it may also be missing that means there is erratic sales and no trend can be established there are various methods by which this trend if present can be analyzed the line of best fit moving average method method of least square are some ways of forecasting if there is regular trend and ratio comparison and some more methods are applicable if there is seasonal trend illustration let the sales for the 6 years beginning 2010 is given as under using the data forecast the sales for the year 2016 
The following table shows the figure of sales in rupees per lakhs solution. If we look at the data given in the above table, there is a clear trend of increase in sales by rupees 10 lakhs and therefore a forecast can be made that sales for the year 2016 shall be rupees 110 lakhs rupees. Whether we go by moving average or semi average or by method of least square, the result will be same but this is not always the case. Regression analysis. Regression analysis can be used in sales forecasting to measure the relationship between a firm's sale and other independent variables like income, population etc. Various equations forms can be statistically fitted to the date in the search for the best predicting factors and equations. Under regression analysis, an equation is fitted given by capital Y is equals to A plus B capital X, where the value of capital Y, the dependent variable is the value of our forecast and capital X is the independent variable which affect the value of Y. Whatever be the method used for financial forecasting, the ultimate forecasts are made by making projected financial statements. Pro forma financial statements are prepared based on the past data. They bring out the net results of the forecast made. Pro forma financial statements. The pro forma financial statement includes pro forma income statement and pro forma balance sheet. Projections can be made for a particular period regarding income and additional funds required or release as per the projections of operations and thus a projection of financial position can be made. To start preparing the projected statement, some base is taken. This could be the income statement of the past year or past quarter depending upon the period for which the statements are required to be prepared as well as their relevance in the present scenario. Let us take an example and explain the concept of projected financial income statement, projected financial position. For this, we shall take up quarter 2 for projections taking quarter 1 as the base. It is important to prepare income statement first as the profits after tax reflected in the income statement will form part of the balance sheet as change in retained earnings. Projected financial income statement. There are different methods by which the pro forma income statement can be prepared. This can be estimated in a variety of ways such as either by using trend analysis or by making detailed sales forecast of all the different products the firm has been selling, incorporating any changes for dropping any product from the line or making any additional thereto. Illustration 1. The actual results of the first quarter for the year 20x5 shows a sales of 10,000 units at a selling price of rupees 100 per unit. This is the total number of units sold for all the products with an average rate of rupees 100. For projecting the income statement of second quarter, we shall assume that the selling price of various units and sales mix will remain constant. However, the number of units sold will take a dip by 20% as second quarter of the year is not as good a season as first, which is also evident from firm's statistics of past many years. The cost of production turns out to be 60% and selling expenses are rupees 20 per unit. The firm is in a tax bracket of 30%. In the second quarter, the raw material prices have increased by 10% which constitute 50% of the total cost of production. Based on this, prepare a pro forma income statement of the second quarter of the year 20x5. Solution Pro forma income statement 
of the second quarter of the year 20x5 taking the first quarter of 20x5 as the base is given in the following table wn1 the total cost of production is 60% of the sales and out of that the raw material cost is 50% Therefore, the cost of existing material per unit is rupees 30, which increases by 10%. So, it becomes rupees 33 per unit, and at 8000 units, it is 8000 multiplied by 33 is equals to 2,64,000 rupees. In the estimation of cost of goods sold, percent of sales method is used. An assumption is made that the future relationship between various elements of cost to sales will be similar to their historic relationship. The actual first quarter operating statement provides detail on the main component of material which shows an increase of 10%. Projected financial position statement. Continuing with the above example, projections about the financial position can also be made by taking the financial position as at the end of quarter 1 of the year 20x5 as the base. Illustration 2. The following is the financial position of a firm as on 31st March 2000x5. Using the information given in illustration 1 and making suitable assumptions, prepare a projected financial position as at the end of the second quarter. Financial position as at the end of the first quarter of the year is represented in the following table. Solution 2. Projected financial position as at the end of the first quarter of the year 20x5 is given in the following table. While preparing the projected balance sheet, certain assumptions are to be made which are as follows. First. The retained earnings are not withdrawal from the business and there is no further addition of capital. Second, some of the liabilities have been paid off and some current liabilities have reduced on account of reduction in sales and level of operations. Third, current assets have increased due to increase in cash generated from operations and fixed assets have decreased on account of depreciation. No additional funds were required as the level of operations have been curtailed. Other pro forma financial statements. The other pro forma statements include cash budgets and operating budgets. Cash budgets. Cash budgets are very specific planning tools that are prepared every month or even every week. They give specific incidents about the inflow and outflow of the cash. The entire detail of cash receipts and cash payments can be presented through cash budgets. After analyzing the movement of cash in the past, the finance manager can make forecasts about the requirements of cash and can take decision regarding the minimum cash to be kept. He should however be careful in making suitable adjustments and happening or occurrence of extraordinary circumstances. Illustration 3. Lalit is large consumer durable, 25% of its sales are for cash. The balance is on one month's credit, though at least 20% of the total sales end up being collected in the second month following sales. You are given the following data. Required. First. A schedule of cash collection during April, May and June. Second, an estimate of additional collection in April, May and June if credit on one month is to be enforced strictly. Solution. First, schedule showing estimate cash collection in April, May and June is represented in the following table. Second, Statement showing estimate of additional collection in April, May and June if credit period of one month is to be enforced strictly from April onwards is given in the following table. Operating Budgets 
The pro forma statements and cash budgets provide an overall view of the firm's future performance. But if the organization is big operational budgets are also prepared for different divisions. They form the base for the preparation of projected financial statements. They are also helpful in identifying the key factor or the limiting factor which is becoming a constraint in the growth of the firm. The entire projections move around this limited resource only. Examples of operational budgets are sales budget, production budget, marketing budget etc growth and sustainable growth growth rate financial forecasting helps in determining the level of growth and if forecast suggest much growth financial requirements will also come up to achieve that growth and this should be worked out the external financial requirement can be calculated New investments are required which could be a function of growth rate into initial assets. What will be the source of these funds? A part of these funds can come from retained earnings. The rest has to be raised through external sources either debt or equity. The external financing requirement can be found with the help of the following mathematical equation. EFR is equals to A by S into change in S minus L by S into change in S minus M S1 bracket 1 minus D bracket close where EFR is the external financial requirement, change in S is the expected increase in sales, L by S is the spontaneous liabilities as a proportion of sales, A by S is the current assets and fixed assets as a proportion of sales, M is the net profit margin, S1 is the projected sales for the next year, D is the dividend payout ratio. This can also be written as EFR by change in S is equals to A by S minus L by S minus M into bracket 1 plus G bracket close into bracket 1 minus D bracket close divided by G where G is the growth rate in sales. Illustration 4 ABC company has the following ratios delta S is equals to expected increase in sales rupees 5 lakh. L by S is equals to spontaneous liabilities as a proportion of sales is equals to 0 0.3. A by S is equals to current assets and fixed assets as a proportion of sales is equals to 0 0.8. M is the net profit margin is equals to 0 0.05. S1 is the projected sales for the next year given as rupees 50 lakhs. D is the dividend payout ratio given as 0 0.4. Now find out the external financial requirement. Solution 4. EFR is equals to A by S into delta S minus L by S into delta S minus M into S1 into 1 minus D where EFR is the external financial requirement. This is given as 0 0.8 into 5 lakh minus 0 0.3 into 5 lakh minus 0 0.05 into 50 lakh into 0 0.6 is equals to 1 lakh. This equation highlights that the amount of external financing depends on the firm's projected growth in the sales. The faster the firm grows, the more will be the need for investment and therefore the more it needs to raise new capital. A firm with a high volume of retained earnings relative to its assets can generate a higher growth rate without needing to raise more capital. The maximum sales growth rate given by G that can be financed without resorting to external financing is given by the following equation. 
0 is equals to bracket starts a by s minus l by s minus m into 1 plus g into 1 minus d by g bracket close into delta s. Sustainable growth rate. A firm though having desire to grow may not like to raise external equity due to various reasons like high cost of issue or unacceptable dilution of control. In that case, the firm would like to know the rate of growth which it can achieve without resorting to issue of external equity. This is known as sustainable growth and for this the following assumptions have to be made in order to find out this rate. The assets of the firm will increase proportionality to sales, the net profit margin is constant, dividend payout ratio and equity ratio will remain constant. External issue of equity will not be resorted to. Now, if A is equals to E plus D, that is total assets given by A is equals to equity given by E plus total debt given by D and D by E is equals to the debt equity ratio, the next period's income M into S1 is equals to m into s naught bracket 1 plus g bracket close increase in retained earnings m s naught bracket 1 plus g bracket close again bracket 1 minus d bracket close increase in borrowings that is m s naught into 1 plus g into 1 minus d into capital D divided by capital E. Increase in assets that is delta A is equals to A G. Since increase in assets is equal to the increase in debt and increase in equity therefore A G is equals to M into S naught into 1 plus G into 1 minus D plus M into S naught into 1 plus g into 1 minus d into d divided by e therefore g is equals to m into 1 minus d into a by e divided by a by s naught minus m into 1 minus d into a by e. This is known as sustainable growth. Illustration 5. Let the ratios of a firm be as follows. M is equals to 0 0.05, D is equals to 0 0.4, A by E is equals to 1.5, A by S naught is equal to 0 0.8. Now find out the rate of sustainable growth with internal equity. Solution 5. Since G is equals to M into 1 minus D into A by E divided by A by S naught minus M into 1 minus D into A by E, Therefore, G is equals to 0 0.05 into 1 minus 0 0.4 into 1.5 divided by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.05 into 1 minus 0 0.4 into 1.5 which is equals to 5.96 percent. Computerized financial forecasting. Computerized financial planning and forecasting has gained tremendous momentum. There are so many variables involved in financial forecasting which is beyond human comprehension and the use of planning models and computer generated spreadsheets has grown enormously. Most of the available financial software packages are offering financial simulation and projection capabilities. They differ in their technicalities and sophistication. The usefulness of computer lies in the fact that it can tackle myriad combination of assumptions, variables and conditions within no time with utmost accuracy. Summary Let us now summarize what we have done in this module. Financial forecasting is a planning process with which the company's management positions, the firm's future activities relative to the expected economic technical, competitive and social environment.
there are three main techniques of financial projections. They are pro forma financial statements, cash budgets and operation budgets. There are broadly two methods of forecasting. The first is the subjective method. The second method is the objective and this method uses the statistical tools in making the forecast. These includes A. Trend analysis via extrapolation B. Regression analysis The pro forma financial statement includes pro forma income statement and pro forma balance sheet. The other pro forma statement include A. Cash budget B. Operating budget Growth rate Financial forecasting helps in determining the level of growth and if forecasts suggest much growth, financial requirements will also come up to achieve that growth and this should be worked out. The external financial requirements can be calculated. The external financial requirements can be found with the help of the following mathematical equation. EFR is equals to A by S into delta S minus L by S into delta S minus M into S1 into 1 minus D. EFR is the external financial requirement. Sustainable growth rate. A firm though having desire to grow may not like to raise external equity due to various reasons like high cost of issue or unacceptable dilution of control. In that case, the firm would like to know the rate of growth which it can achieve without resorting to issue of external equity. This is known as sustainable growth. G is equals to M into 1 minus D into A by E divided by A by S naught minus M into 1 minus D into A by E. Computerized financial planning and forecasting has gained tremendous momentum. There are so many variables involved in financial forecasting which is beyond human comprehension and use of planning models and computer generated spreadsheets has grown enormously.